because Isaiah said, I am a man of unclean lips. So when we have an encounter with God, we realize our own condition. And he also said, and I live among people of unclean uh, um, lips. So also we talked about that when we have an encounter with God, we get aware, awareness of the reality of our culture, of, 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 of the world we're living in. And for that reason, there was a call of God saying, who's going to go for us? And uh, I say uh, answer to that. And the second uh, week, we talked about uh, Acts chapter 2, uh, after the, the preaching of Peter in the day of Pentecost, and the key word for the second day of an encounter with God, we talked about change. There is not possibility for us to have an encounter with God and stay the same. So the people asked Peter when they knew about Jesus and how he came to be our savior and, what, and he did what he did, what are we gonna do? Because I mean, he's gone. And Peter said, repent and baptize everyone for the forgiveness of sins and you will receive the promised Holy Spirit that David uh, focus on in part of our worship today. Change. Repentance is the key word in, this, in, the, uh, in the scriptures, but what it means is change. And this is, uh, as a pastor, I see through the years that the, there is a problem with us. And, and, and maybe I had that when I came to the Lord, and it is that I thought that I was so good that God had a great acquisition when he got me. And we live in the, our life of faith with the same thoughts that we had before we came to the Lord, and that is totally wrong. You know, God is real. God talked to us. God communicates with us. And the first time that I got to hear the voice of God right there, that I was sure God was talking to me. You know what he said to me? I need to change you. I need you to change. That was the first thing he told me. Ah, uh, what, what, a, what a type of romance was that, right? So, change. And last week, we talked about an encounter with God with another key word. What was the key word? Worship. It was adoration. And we talk about that uh, um, lep uh, leopard that, that came, I mean, the, the ten lepers that came to Jesus, and just one came back after they were healed. Only one came back, and that one that came back bend before Jesus, throw himself to his feet, and worship him. And that, to me, is the best personal uh, measurement or uh, evaluation for me to know that I have an encounter with God. I used to be a good guy. I didn't do drugs. I didn't go to prostitutes or nothing. I was a very clean type of guy, right? But one thing that I didn't have that I got when I came to know God is worship. I didn't know what worship was about. When people would talk about worship, I would think of a, an Oriental, you know, hitting his head against the floor, and I consider that ridiculous or confusing or whatever. But when we have an encounter with God, we worship, we adore. We learn to praise the Lord. The Psalms become a beautiful thing for us. I, I didn't like literature when I was in high school. But when I started to worship God, the, the poetry of the Psalms, it is a, a, an energy of joy and, and satisfaction and peace and power from God. So today, part four, 
the key word is church. And what, what, does, what do I mean church? I mean when you have an encounter with God, you become church. And that is something that makes many people to struggle. But let, let's consider today's word in, in uh, Acts chapter 2, even though it doesn't say there, it's Acts chapter 2, um, verses um, 41 and 42. And it's a follow-up to, to our second, uh, uh, a second uh, week that we were right there in Acts chapter 2, and, and after Peter told them to repent and be baptized, the Bible says that those who accepted his message were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. The fellowship of the believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. You know, it is important to be able to see life the way God says it, or at least receive his advice on what reality is about. And the believer's life after Jesus re returned to heaven is defined in a pattern that is in the heart of God. We need to understand, you know, I, I many times say our problem as humankind started when we took God out of the picture of our lives. When we took God off of the seat of decisions in our lives. And we need to, the only solution is to bring God back to the throne in our lives. And he needs to tell us, to tell us how to do things. So the concept of church cannot come from us. It has to come from God. And uh, when you read this scripture, it's, it's so beautiful when you see that this is not a manipulation, that this is not uh, a, a, a place where people think that you come and we're going to empty your, po your pocket, you know, send your home uh, crazier than when you came in. But when you look at this scripture, wh what is the reality of life in Christ? The model that we can see of... Um, what, what would be a practical, a practicality uh, in the lifestyle, it is that the gospel is received, we confess Jesus publicly, we commit to Christ, and we become church. It's that simple. We need the gospel, we need to react to it, and we need to become the church. That's what it says there. They accepted the message, they were baptized, and about 3,000 were added. That's, that's simply that. that. We don't have to, you know, go with deep philosophical conceptions and discussions and things. No, the practical modality is that. Believe and accept Jesus and uh, confessing. Uh, remember, we cannot be Christians of the secret service. We, we need to publicly confess Jesus, and we become church. We commit to the kingdom's agenda. That is the reality. And when you go to other places of the scripture, like Acts chapter 4, there is a similar expression. Many who heard the message believed, saw the number of men who believed grew or were added to about 5,000. So the people hear the word, the people believes, and the people becomes church. The people becomes part of that number. We get added to the church. That is, even though there is not the word church there, when you go to chapter 5 and on, you're going to find that the reference to these added to the group or to the assembly is the word assembly, is church. It is church. So that's, that's simply, I mean, I could stop today and not preach anymore. Uh, I guess I shouldn't say that in front of three pastors because they would say, okay, finish, get out, <laughs> right? No, but yes, that's the message. 
that's the reality that we're going to see. But I'm going to try to help some people that are struggling with the issue of church. Because they say, I don't know, you know, church is a bunch of people that create many problems, and I'm not really interested in that. But I'm going to show you how in the revelation of the scriptures, you have an encounter with God, you become church. And there's no other modality. And there's no other way that the gospel itself could become alive in you if you don't become church. And the first thing I want to talk to you is about the concept of church being God's plan. So the concept of church is not, you know, uh, uh, an ultimate reaction of us to the situation that was going on. Oh, many are believing, uh, well, what are we going to do? We need to create something and, you know, that uh, uh, we could become together or whatever. It was not. It was not a last minute thing. Look at what the uh, The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul speaks to the Ephesians about the mystery that came from eternal times. And and open your eyes, open your heart, because when you read this, you're going to realize the beauty, the, the, the majestic that it is the concept of the church, because uh, Paul says there is a mystery that Nobody was suspecting, but God had from, from centuries, he, he had from eternity in his heart, and it was the concept of Christ in you. Christ in you. Christ in me. That is a concept that the world's still struggling with. And it is... Who are you? They just think we are another religion, you know, they classify us as, as, you know, any kind of other Hinduism or whatever other uh, expression of uh, religious belief might go around. But they, they have a hard time to understand that God himself came to us in Jesus Christ and promised that if we repented that he would come and be part again of our lives and we would become the body of Christ and that God himself could be showing himself to the world through you, through me. That is a hard thing for the world but I'm going to tell you something worse, and it is that it's a hard thing for even people in the church. They are here because the brownies of Rose, they are so good. And because Linda doesn't say bad words, that feels nice too. You know, and the zucchini bread of Dorcas, oh goodness. You know, uh, this is a nice place. This, this building is beautiful. You know, everybody that uh, comes here for the first time, they say, wow, this is beautiful. You know, and thanks God the air conditioning is working. <laughs> but no, we even in the church struggle to understand that God has revealed a, tr- a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mystery that is to Im- impact our lives forever in every aspect. And it is that we become church. It is that now mankind can believe with the Holy Spirit as the church, the body of Christ. The ones that as the Father sent him, he sent us to, to the world. So the kingdom of God could be among the people through you and me. That's what it says there. And that's God's plan. So when I reject the concept of church, and when I start doubting that that makes sense, we're just rejecting God's plan that he has from eternity. 
Do you understand that? That's what it says the scripture there. Although I am less than the least of, of the Lord people, says that Paul, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authority in the heavenly realms. The heavens are shaken because of the reality of the church. But we are here doubting and criticizing and, um, and rejecting. We don't understand that the church is God's plan since eternal times. So it's not just a simply style. It's not that I go to the supermarket and I decide between two brand names of laundry detergent. No. If we do not embrace the concept of the church, if we don't become church, we are rejecting God's plan. That simply is what it says, the, the, the scriptures. And so today's scriptures give us a model. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number. In Acts chapter 5 and verse 14, there is another reference, and believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. Yes, the concept of being a Christian has a lot of angles. It's a diamond with, with a lot of faces, and all of them are beautiful. But we need to understand that we need to become the church, and that that is the design of God. Knowing that in the model of the church, the one who believes confesses, we understand that here some men and women were counted to join the assembly, the community of believers, the church. So that's the model. That is what God created. And so we have the, the reality is that some people will say, well, yeah, the church, that body, yeah, the universal body, the Catholic church, for some people, don't get surprised, but the, the term Catholics means universal. universal. It's just simply that. It's, it's not the label of a group, uh, of a section of the church or of a group of people that have their faith. No. It means the universal church. So, so people like the universal concept because there's no accountability. You know, there's no practice in the gospel simply if we just... I'm, I'm home, but I'm your brother. Yes, I accept that idea. Yes, yes, yes. Well, look at this. When Paul and his team went preaching the gospel, they didn't just get people to say, I believe in Jesus, hallelujah, give them a kiss and say, see you in heaven. That was not the model. That was not the reality. They organized the new structure. They began to call them a church, uh, and which in this case, the word church represented more the congregation than the just the big body of the universal uh, uh, church. Uh, like, for example, you have there uh, in 1 Corinthians, he says to the church of God in Corinth. I mean, he was talking about a specific group of people located in a specific geography. In the Second Corinthians, he refers them again to the Church of God in Corinth, and uh, to, the, to the Ephesians, he says, the, to God's holy people in Ephesus. So there is a specific geography. There is the importance of the local church. It's not just simply, yes, the big structure, the spiritual uh, reality, which is beautiful and is an awesome thing that only God can do. But when it comes to, to practical terms, we cannot get lost in space. There, the congregation is important. Um, you know, 
look, look, at, look at this uh, description of, of how uh, Paul and them went in Acts chapter, well, that, that, uh, that reference is really Acts chapter 14. And uh, I started on verse 31, they preached the gospel in that city and won a large no number of disciples. And to talk about disciples, that right away calls for an organization, a training, a relationship. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthen, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to, the, to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. After going through Pisidia, they came to, into Pamphylia. You see, it was not just simply, hey, don't believe in uh, 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 Zeus and believe in Jesus. You did that? Did you switch the, the, the label? Yeah, well, that's it. No. They became disciples. They became church. And that church has an, had an organization. And, 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 and in that organization, they had to be bold guys, you know, with uh, a nice belly like me that sometimes would tell you you're doing it wrong. You need to change. You need to go out there. You need to preach to your own children. You need to live a life worthy of the Lord. Like if you read the letters of, of Paul, that is constant. That is constant. You see Paul telling uh, one of his disciples, Titus, uh, the reason I left you in Crete was that you might put in order what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. So, yes, there is all this mess of pastors, elders, uh, teachers, whatever, and ministry councils and treasurers and craziness um, that sometimes you would like to get rid of. But we need it. We need it. We need to become church. We need to be accountable. We need to have somebody. We became part of a body. And for that reason, ministries and gifts are also ministered by the Holy Spirit in the framework of Church, it is in the congregation that God establishes ministries and minister, and the Holy Spirit imparts gifts to give capability to believers to bless one another and to take uh, uh, um, charge of the work of the proclaiming of the gospel to the world. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, it says that Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So where, do you, where are you going to find that? Well, go to Walmart or maybe Amazon has it now. No. It's here. In the church. It is in the church. From verse 16... Yeah, there is a warning there. So, so many people that I find that they doubt the church, and especially for the money part of that, you know. Oh, you got to give offerings, and blah, 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 blah. Why do you have to pay somebody? Verse 16 says, from him the whole body joined and held together. That's God's design. We are not to be hermit guys in the top of the mountains and far away from everything. The whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Each part needs to be in the body. I heard recently somebody saying, an arm detached from the body it's good for nothing. A leg detached from the body is good for nothing. We need to be attached to the body. 
And the body is where the Holy Spirit gives a manifestation. There is what the Bible says, and, and David mentioned it before, the fruit of the Spirit, that is the, the, the result of the Holy Spirit working in the whole aspect, in, in all the aspects of our lives to turn us into Jesus, to look like Jesus. But the Holy Spirit also gives us everybody gifts, abilities, capacities to bless others, to serve others. And we need to be aware of that and not to say, like Paul says to them, uh, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and, and, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. You cannot say, I'm here. And that's it. I believe in Jesus. No. If you believe in Jesus, you become church. You become church. I don't mean that you have to come to this building in this a specific geographical point, but you need to become church. The gospel cannot be practiced if you don't become church. One of the examples, and I'm going to one extreme, is the discipline when, when somebody needs to be corrected, when somebody needs to be instructed, when a wrongdoing needs to be uh, corrected. It doesn't happen. The model that Jesus gave us in Matthew 18 is that it happens in the church. It doesn't happen in court. It doesn't happen in the political party. It happens right here in the church. Jesus says, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. To them to who? And if they refuse to listen, even the church, then treat them as uh, you would a pagan or a tax collector. You see, it's this, this, the, the fact of church is not a human convenience, even though I believe it is very convenient. But it's God's design, and but I think but that's why it works. It is God's design. So when you go to all the, the letters of Paul, you're going to see that Paul is not simply talking about uh, though see one day I pass by your house, you lift your hands and you say, I love Jesus. When he writes to the Corinth, he says the church of God in Corinth. When he writes to the Galatians, to the churches in Galatia. When he writes to the Philippians, uh, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi. When he writes to the church of the Thessalonians, he says to the church of the Thessalonians. An encounter with God is not just simply, uh, there, there is a song that Paul talks about, on a spiritual um, experience, something like that. I, I don't know what, what the word they use. Uh, because now people are spiritual. But spiritual could mean nothing. Or they concentrate and they think on the immortality of the crab. And then they are spiritual. You know, because in this moment, they are not thinking of the sandwich they ate already to get overweight but they're meditating in the hummingbird. And people are spiritual. And you know there's room to be spiritual. Yeah. 
And demons are part of that, right? So we need, we need God. Yes, we need to be spiritual, but not spe- an open sp- space concept of a spirituality. We need to have our sins forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. We need the Holy Spirit that he sent for those who believe in him and become church. You know, I I have heard many people accusing uh, other group of people of uh, narrow-minded. That because those people want to put things down the throat on you. You know, this society demands that we be more open-minded. And, 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 and you know, uh, if you ask me my preference, maybe I would like that. But the problem is that this is not about my preference or your preference. God designed the world. When you open the Bible, the first line you're going to read is, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So when it comes to define life, we need to come to God and get his design for things. So, and, and, and when I see Jesus telling us about it, he doesn't come with the open mind concept, you know, the spiritual open space concept. You know, I, I tore down a wall in my house because my house is small and I feel I felt a little bit, you know, enclosed there. And now I have a little, it looks like there is a little bit more space. It's the same space it was before. <laughs> But we want to apply that to a spirituality. And I say, let's ask Jesus. And I would say, do you think that the gospel is open-minded? So when Jesus says, I am the way, the life, the truth, and nobody comes to the Father but through me, is an open-mind concept. Is the gospel an open mind concept when he says that there is one God and one mediator between God and man, Jesus Christ? Is that an open mind concept? It is uh, when Jesus says, uh, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Is that an open mind concept? You know, we get so confused because the open mind concept, I think, and this is just a, an opinion of somebody who is not too, too, too much of a uh, studied guy. Uh, but, you know, we want to be inclusive. That's, that's, that's a word of the last years, right? We want to be inclusive. And I think that there's not a more inclusive reality than to say that God so loved the world that he gave his only son for whosoever believes in him will not perish, but we have eternal life. You want inclusivity? There it is. God loves us all. And he sent salvation for all. Nobody is as as inclusive as he is. I say that the gospel is not open-minded, but is open-armed. Jesus died on the cross saying, I love you all, and I am dying for you. Yes, everybody can find love 
in Christ. But that doesn't change the gospel. That doesn't allow us to create a new spirituality. An encounter with God ends up turning us into church. You reject the concept, you regret God. And that's what I see in the scripture. And it's not just because it's my preference. Hey, I came to learn this the same way everybody else who came to Jesus. My parents were not Christians. I mean, they, they believed in God, but it, it, oh, oh, with an uncertain or, or undefined concept that we get for the influence of uh, the Catholicism in our countries, in the Latin America, which is much better than be lost in the Oriental mindset and, and many things that are there. So, an encounter with God turn us into church. So the questions to conclude my message is, do I have an encounter with God? Am I following God's model? In other words, am I the church? Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your care. I thank you for your design and, and thank you for not <laughs> leaving it to me, because even I would, I would suffer a lot. It would be a big mess. But thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for, for Jesus. Thank you for Moses. Thank you for Daniel. Thank you for all the prophets and everybody else. And, but thank you especially for Jesus. And thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving us your word. Help us to turn our lives around, to know you, and to become your bride, to become that one that you're coming for. In Jesus' name, amen.